Welcome back on to the second issue of the day. Atiku Abubakar has sold his shares in Integrated Logistics Services, popularly known as Intel's Nigeria Limited. In recent times, the company seems to be at loggerheads with the Nigerian Ports Authority, a field Atiku insists is politically motivated. According to the report, Atiku sold his shares to Olil Investment Group, the parent company of Intel's, for various amounts totaling over $100 million in the deal that spanned two years. When converted to Naira, the money is close to 40 billion Naira. Could this move have been done in preparation for his presidential bid, or it is meant to insulate the company from political persecution? Joining us to discuss this is Ola Dimeji Fabi, a member of the PDP. Good evening, Ola Dimeji Fabi. Yeah, my brother, good evening. Happy New Year. Good yeah, to be here. Good to see you. And we still have a Reverend Dakbo Daramola, who is a political analyst at this time. So, good evening, gentlemen, once again. Let's get yeah, started good. with um, uh, Fabi. Fabi, I, 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 some of us are a bit confused with the position of. Um, um, Atiku Abubakar, is it born out of persecution, thereby selling his shares, or from what he said, he wants to divert this money into another businesses? And, and on, in, in one swoop, he has said that uh, the government is chasing away foreign direct investment. Is it not this same country that he has diverted the money into? If you can help me make sense of uh, my confusion. Well, thank you very much, Kaldi. First and foremost, I'd like to say that there's no confusion anywhere. Okay. Um, Atiku, as we know, is a co-founder of Intel. And uh, he has a long-standing long history with the company, building it up from the scratch with his foreign partners to where it is today. Uh, they invested billions of dollars to make that place where, you know, where it is today. If you go through the records and the history, it is one legitimate business that has helped in employing thousands of Nigerians and when, the, when, when, when jobs was, were, 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 were scarce to find. And, uh, and I appreciate the ingenuity of Atiku and his partners who have come up with that. He employed so many, it's a, quite a legitimate business. Uh, but uh, for me, uh, like I said, there's no confusion anywhere, but uh, some people may want, to create conf may want to get confused by themselves. Atiku made it abundantly clear why he redirected his investment. And like every right-thinking businessman who knows his onions, when things are not going, it doesn't have to be, when you discover that things are not going well, not well with your company, you have every right to do what you want to do with your business and your company. This is about Atiku's private life. It's about his private business. I don't think anyone should be worried or be confused about this. And I don't think any meaning, apart from what the man that is, there that's actually affected. I said this is the reason, one of the this is the reason why I have to do this. And in contrast to what you said, it is possible, and I know the article that I know is a, is a creator of jobs, is an employer of labor in the largest scale. So the possibility of him moving the money into another business that will help create jobs, that will help him do the things he knows how to do best, is what he will do. The article I know will not carry his money across board, you know, he has so many business interests, not just in the maritime sector. He's into real estate, he's into farming, he's into okay. livestock, okay. he's into uh, beverages and all that. So nobody should get confused here. Okay. It's, it's a very clear and direct matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabi. I'm coming back to that. And uh, probably I should also put it on record, except uh, that Paul Daramola has changed. He's usually brand himself as a Buharist. So it is fine to hear what he has to say. So quickly, why do we need to persecute, using Fabi's word, a genuine business? I remember the loggerheads with MPA. I remember so many dramas that ensued in the build up to the election. Uh, uh, is it okay to say that government has achieved its aim by making him pull out? Well, I think, um, like, uh, let me borrow the word which, which was bantered by uh, my brother Fabi, uh, which is that uh, there's no confusion. I think if there's no confusion, we'll not be here in the first instance. Uh, the confusion was created by the article count when he came out to say that um, uh, the current administration is persecuting his business 
they want to kill his business and all of that. That's where the confusion started. Until date, I want to place on record that at Chiku's camp, the Mr. Polibe that released, that sent out the release, has still not written another one to either align his position with the, with the full ownership of Intel's, because they have come out to explain, to clear the air. So there's a, there, there are discordant tunes. Let me put it that way. Atiku is saying something else, and the company Intel's are saying something else. Intel's, through their own spokesperson, uh, Tommaso Rufinoni, Rufinoni has come out to say that they don't have any problem at all with the administration of Muhammad Buhari, and they are not being persecuted, they are not being hunted down, they are not being, they, they, whatever issue they have is clearly a business matter, which needs to be resolved. And so when Atiku turns a situation which ordinarily is as, is as clear as day, wants to now manipulate that situation and create mischief out of it, to brand the government as being, you know, uh, I don't want to, I don't know, you know, to be like um, uh, uh, a ruderless government that doesn't want to see him grow because he's on the opposing side. That, that, that will be created some confusion that is not fair. Okay, can we leave the confusion issue now? Do you believe that uh, this business is facing serious persecution because of Atiku's interest? No, it's not. It's not. The matter is very clear. What is the issue between MPA and Intel? Okay. MPA at some point, for about 17 years, according to the story, they signed what they call a boat pilotage agreement. Boat pilotage agreement, in that agreement, they need to raise revenues for the, the MPA, for the government. And so that was part of, you know, they need to be co what they call collection of revenues, you know, for the government. And unfortunately, what we are being told now by MPA, which Intel has not come out to say is untrue, I'm waiting for that. And that's why, as a journalist who is trained, I should follow the facts and sentiments. What is out there, which is the fact, is that Intel is owing MPA from the revenues generated or collected up to about 207 point something million US dollars hmm. that they have not remitted. And so for about four years, they drag, drag. Don't forget this, this agreement has been on for about 17 years. So it, it shows you that even when Atiku was in government, a company that he co-owns, you know, is, was making money okay. you know, from, from, from the same government. Let, so I'm let, not going into that. Anybody can own company and they can okay. But that the point, point let, let's put the narrative in proper you have done that. You have done that in your own way. Yes. Let's let's listen to Fabi. I, I'm sure he has a different narrative from what you've uh, put out there. Fabi. Well, 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 well Kaori, I, 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 I just couldn't hold myself back when I look at Reverend speaking. But um, I will give it to him. He has to do the job. Now, let me tell you this. Even though when I was invited to come and talk on this matter, I, I didn't want to come because I don't see it as an issue that you should generate, generate this kind of energy, all right? Like I said, Atiku has the right, all right, to say, I am redivesting my investment from this company. It's his private life. It's his private business. Let me remind my brother there, maybe he just, because he was only talking on one side of the matter. It is true that MPA claimed Intel's owed them some money. I want to remind him again that does he know that the matter is in court now? And the company is saying that MPA, you are owing us 750, over 750 million US dollars. And that's why they are in court. Does he know how many court cases are in court between Intel and federal government as we speak? So let us leave this matter. As far as I know, Atiku has moved his investment away from Intel. Then government should go and sit down, go and face Intel and do business with Intel. Whether Intel is doing that to protect their businesses is their problem. Atiku has taken a leave. If he believed it was a problem, why the onslaught against the continuous onslaught against the company was going on, was happening, and said, guys, let me move my things and you continue your business. His children that were there are no more there. So why dissipating this energy? We have a lot of issues in this country to fix. This country is broken by this government. We need to fix that. I am not buying into this conversation. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. Now, let's look at some fundamentals. 
between you and uh, between, I mean, so that Jira can 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 get. It's only a mysterious person or you know, that will be putting a lot of energy on this. Dan Gote <laughs> divested his investment. My Kadenuga divested his investment. If I think I come out to say, guys, I am leaving because of this, and the company on the other hand say, I have said. QED, he settles it. Then the matter is that you don't expect for Oliver to come out and be saying what again. They have made their point, and the company has made this point. Then the company should go ahead with working with government. Simple. QED. So we shouldn't dissipate lots of energy on this. We have a lot to fix in this country. How many businesses have died under this government? It's enough. It's not just Intel. Lots Fabi. of businesses have gone completely because of this government. So Fabi. we won't go into all this matter at all. I, I, I will, I will, I will insist that I'm begging you that we, this matter is what discussing. If the figures you are also mentioning is that huge, then Nigerians have a stake in this conversation. They that, need to that hear. That is the reason the matter is in court. The, I, I, that that's, is the reason the matter. These people are in court. So I am, it's, a, it's a settled matter. The government is claimed, making a claim. Inter is making a claim. That's why they are in court. And beyond that, there are so many other court cases between these two parties. So let's leave them to sort their matter. Whether why, it is because of article or not, time will tell. Okay, why will we try not to uh, be subjudice in our comments? But it's Thank important you. that we should look at the import of what Adiku said, that this is political persecution. This is something that has to do with FDI. We are expecting investors to come into the business. Reverend Akwadamala, can we also look at uh, how strong that statement is and if you have a different opinion from what uh, Fabi had said, because there's a right of reply. No, I, I don't have a problem because I'm, I'm sure there are people listening to us and um, like I said, I've been spent all my life in journalism and I've done sessions like this. I think Mr. Fabi is just uh, railroading, and I will explain that. When you were invited for this program, and that's why I, I laid the foundation. I mean, we are, we, this is what we do every day. We lay foundation, premise for discussions. The only reason why we are talking about this in the first instance is not because Intel has a problem with MPE and they are, they are in court. The only reason why we are delving into this matter was because Atiku said the only reason why he was pulling his investment out of that company was because the federal government of Nigeria, under the Buraya administration, has, has zeroed down you know, on them and they are persecuting that business. And that's an irresponsible comment to make from a, a former vice president of this country. It, to be able to accuse the government, you know, and then to want to, to, want to you know, uh, blackmail, that, that's called blackmailing. It's just what Donald Trump is doing today in America. <laughs> who, who, no, somebody who no. lost election. I don't know whether and that's irresponsible. Be, Reverend Dapo. around to say that you know, he, he won the election. So if Atiku is telling us today in this country that the reason why he wants to divest, nobody will care whatever he put his money if he decides to put it anywhere else and without making any noise about it. But okay. the fact that he labeled the government, that's why we're having this conversation. And well, that's my own interest. I, that the man does not need to tell lies. As to the reason why he was moving his money okay. to do whatever he wants to do. Let, let Some me, of people say that the money he pulled out let, was going to begin the, the foundation for 2023 campaign. That's a different matter. It's not my business. But the point is that he doesn't need to give such a reason that lacks merit and that lacks facts. That maybe, the reason why maybe, he was pulling out his, uh, his money is because Mr. Dakwada Amala, maybe that's the journalist in you that is saying that for a politician, there should be a reason why he should state that. But that, uh, Fabi, I don't know whether uh, he has been able to convince you that uh, <laughs> this is worth discussing. I need yeah. your final comment on this, and what's the way forward? Kayode, Kayode, Nigerians are no fools. We know what this government has done. One of them came out. I don't want to mention his name. He said, by the time we finish with Atiku, he won't have money to feed his family. He's on record. Wow. He's a journalist. He should go and he should go and do his investigative journalism and know who said it. No, you should state the facts. You are on TV. Excuse state the facts. I, I, I mentioned them. Me, you mentioned them, sir. Can Don't tell him to and investigate. Can okay. Can I have my time? Okay, let him. He, he, he will state the facts. Make a comment. Make your comment and make it properly. Name the person. Okay, I let's, know, let's know. allow him state the facts now. You have uh, 30 seconds. Fabi, let's, please, uh, Mr. Dakwadaravola, let's allow him state the fact because uh, we're running out of time. I will interject when he's speaking. Correct, control him. We're not fighting here. 
We are laying the matter on the table. I don't know why it's getting agitated. The truth of the matter is, every article is in the center of this. He has intelligence that Reverend there does not have. He knows what is, and the other Nigerians know what this government is doing to his businesses. It's just not even Intel's, but we keep that, we keep at that. I've given him a job. Let him go and investigate what I just said. Let him go and do that. Then he should come back and tell the truth to Nigerians. Okay. As far as I know, Atiku has taken his decision. Atiku has been so, has always been responsible for this country. He has created more jobs. He uses the word irresponsible. I don't know where that is coming up, coming from. Atiku has been responsible, created thousands of jobs through these businesses and other businesses. So, and I don't know the lies he has said. When somebody said, this is what is happening. We all saw it. Nigerians saw it. No amount of defense from these people can change their narratives. So we leave Intel's and federal government to go and sort out themselves. Atiku is on his own. Is okay. it because he's, Atiku? Is it because he's vice president? Why Fabi, are they always afraid when Fabi, it comes to Atiku? Why Fabi, are they always feeling like when it comes to Atiku? They can't stop Atiku. Abi, Fabi, can I ask you last question before you go? Who made that statement that we, by the time we are done with Atiku? He's a journalist. Let him go and find out. He's okay. a journalist. He's a member of the APC. He said by the time we are done with him, he won't have money to feed, to feed his family. So why can't He's you already, mention his name? Let him go and do that. Okay. Since you've refer, uh, you want us to find out, Reverend Dakwa, you have uh, 30 seconds to close up your well, statement. Well, it's very simple. Unfortunately, if uh, you can forward some of my appearances on... I, I can even follow some others. But if you can forward some of the links of my appearances on this station and let brother, maybe Mr. Fabi understand how much I have castigated this same government. I am not... I, I, you can go and... I've been arrested by the DSL. I, I've gone through a lot. I don't need but to... You are an apologist. You don't need... You are just a statement. Okay, let, let, him, let him finish his statement. I'm looking for appointment. You can, say whatever. Can, can we, can we allow fact, him finish his comment now? There, there are two... Fabi... You are two issues you were asked. You were asked two issues and you were asked... We know people like you are on air. Fabi... I'm so sorry. We have to end that conversation. Uh, I know Reverend Dapo tries to finish up his statement, but I think it's fair. Let's quickly allow you to finish your comment, please. I need to respond because I'm being insulted, and that is very unfortunate. I'm so sorry about that. Somebody that. of his, I mean, when you find a guest who comes on television, we are sorry about that. Insult, you know, use, you know, very derogatory languages and words against somebody that they're having conversations with. They can understand where you know people are coming from. You have done, you have done more than that on this, on this conversation. You have done more than that. This is not the first time I'm on, I'm on national TV. Okay. I've done more than that. Calling a thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Reverend Dakpo, on record, we are sorry for the comments used, and uh, Fabi, we are also sorry if you feel offended with the comments used. I know the comment was directed at your principal, but whichever way. We are very sorry, and I believe that so much had been learned from this conversation. So, I accept our apologies. So sorry about that. Reverend Dakwa, please forgive us. And Fabi, please forgive us. Is that fine? Okay, Reverend Dakwa, trust me, this conversation continues. Fabi, let's have it again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's quickly take a short breather, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. To so the 2021 prophecies, are they really prophecies, or they are predictions based on postulations, or they are mere opinions from clergymen and women? Whichever one it is, the question I have for the fortune tellers Sorry, I mean the prophets, both genuine and fake, is, is God the author of confusion? Certainly not. Like the holy book says, let all men be liars, let God be true. Why do we hear conflicting prophecies from the supposed same God? We are yet to recover from the so-called evangelicals who claimed President Trump was not only God chosen, but I its laws at the pole will be upturned just to prove that they are right. Is it about the messenger or the sender of the message? While I advocate seeking the face of God for direction, can we choose to remain mute when things are not revealed to us? With that, not only that these servants of God will retain their revered position, God's name will also not be dragged in the mud. 
And that's my take on the discussion tonight. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. I am Coyote Ladendi, saying bye for now.